everyone, this is Vicki from Art at Reflection Spine Art, and I'm here today to tell you the three most important things that you need to do to preserve acrylic paintings. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that you need to buy the best paint you can afford. The cheaper craft paints and the, you know the really cheap uh, student paints aren't going to give you the same results. Um, they might look great when you put them down. A lot of people will say that. Well, my art looks fine with this. What's the problem? The problem is that over time, it won't continue to look great. The cheaper paints fade more than the more expensive paints, and they're more prone to peel and crack, um, to flake off the canvas, especially if you apply them very thickly, which a lot of artists like to do to get some texture then they're even more likely to peel off the canvas. The other problem with them isn't so much about preserving, it has to do with color mixing. If you're like me and you tend to work with a limited palette and mix your own colors from your three primaries, um, you don't always get real true results with the cheaper paints. They don't use pure pigments, so what you do to mix a green one time might not mix the same shade of green the next time even if you put the exact same amounts of paint in it and you tend to get muddy colors and things like that. So now to the second thing. Well, there's a lot of people who know that you should varnish an acrylic painting to protect it, but there's something you need to do before you varnish it. It's very important because the varnish makes a removable protective layer and varnish does need to be removed and replaced after about 10 years. Um, and when you remove varnish, you use solvents and things like that that will that could harm the paint underneath. So you need a barrier in between the paint and the varnish. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Now you need to make an isolation coat. And what I you do is you get a soft gel gloss medium. This is Golden Brand. Um, that's the one that I prefer to use. You can use any gloss medium though if you want. And you mix it two parts medium to one part water. I have another jar here where I, I have it pre-mixed. Mix it up, let it sit long enough for all the bubbles to go out of it before you start using it. And then you're going to take a brush that you don't use for anything else and you're going to brush it over your painting. Now when you first do it it's going to look white, it's going to look like you put Elmer's glue all over your painting and you'll think you've destroyed it. You didn't, it's going to dry clear. Um, but let's let's look at this first and I, I'll show you how to do that. So. Um, my husband Bob is handling the camera and he's going to point it down at the painting. And all in all, I'll end up putting two layers on this, but I'm only going to show you one because I have to wait for it to completely dry in between layers. So I dip into my isolation coat and I start to spread the isolation coat on the painting. And you can see that it's going on white. I'm trying to get a nice even layer doing long strokes all going in the same direction back and forth on the canvas all from top to bottom. Now when I do my next coat after this one dries I will go the opposite way back and forth this way to make sure that I fully cover all of the little indentations in the canvas in between the threads and all of that. Um, in addition to providing a protective layer between the paint and the varnish. Um, this also uh, covers up and seals any absorbent areas. Any place where you didn't quite get as much paint or some colors sometimes tend to be more absorbent than others. Um, it will cover those all up and give you one nice smooth even surface. nice flat smooth surface for the varnish to go on to. So there, I've put it on, you can see it looks white. When it's all done though, I guarantee you it will dry completely clear and glossy. And then afterward, 
I will be able to change that up. If I don't want it to have a glossy finish, I can still put a matte varnish over it and it won't look glossy anymore. So you can still, you can choose still how, whether the final result will be glossy or matte. Um, so that's, that's the other important step. Now, after you've done this, after you've let it dry and you've put the second coat on and let that one dry, you're going to want to take a varnish you want to get a varnish, it's not like the varnish you're going to get at Home Depot made for furniture. You want to get a fine art varnish and made for acrylic paintings, make sure it's good for acrylic, and you want it to have a UV resistance. That helps to further protect your paint from fading um, because it protects it from the light. And when you do the, get the varnish, you, if, if you're getting a brush on varnish, you're going to mix it according to whatever the package says. The jar will usually have mixing and directions how much water to put in. And then you'll do the same thing with it that I just did to the isolation coat. You'll put it on one layer going in one direction, then you'll let it fully dry. For varnish, you want to give it at least 12 hours. And then you'll put it on another layer brushing the opposite direction and let that dry and, and then you're finished. Now with the isolation coat it usually only takes about an hour to dry, uh, but the varnish will take about 12 hours. If you're using a spray-on varnish, well that's pretty easy. You'll just shake your can up and spray, let it dry, and then do another coat. Um, now if your painting ever becomes soiled, um, such as happened to mine one time, somebody spilled coffee on it. I have no idea who did that, but I found coffee all over my painting. And it fortunately had the isolation coat and the varnish already on it. If it ever becomes uh, soiled, or even over time if dust just settles in the varnish, or the varnish starts to yellow a little bit or look like it's wearing off, you can remove the varnish by taking a diluted solution of household ammonia and water and putting a rag in that and then you're going to take the rag and you're going to carefully remove the varnish from the painting with that and the ammonia will never touch your paint because the isolation coat is in between the varnish and the paint so it, your, your paint is protected and then you can remove all the varnish then you'll rinse your painting off really good to get all the ammonia off of it and after you do that you can then apply new varnish to your now clean painting because whatever's gotten on it will be in the varnish and not actually in the paint. So, all right, those are the three steps and I hope you have found this helpful. Um, later on, I will probably take a picture of this just to show that it actually did dry clear. But for now, I'm gonna say adios.